University of Evansville Aces basketball dominated the city in the 1950s and 60s. Basketball was a major event for all of Evansville, not just the sports fans in town. It was a cultural event like no other, because nobody in Evansville would schedule a party during an Aces game, because everyone in the town would be focused on their team at Roberts Stadium. Men would often wear their best clothes, and women would wear dresses and high heels. Aces basketball was the thing to do in town even if you did not enjoy basketball. As the Aces became more known around the country, so did the city of Evansville. It was also well known that if you wanted to see someone in Evansville at the time, you should just head down to the Aces game because they would likely be there. The Aces played at Roberts Stadium, which was built in 1956, and it is named after the mayor at the time, O.H. Roberts. This new stadium made the Purple Aces the heart of Evansville for many years to come. The arena was based on Madison Square Garden in New York City, however, it was not as large. The stadium at its peak was the Mecca of Evansville. This arena would be packed time and time again, not just for the Purple Aces, but for stars such as Ronald Reagan, Elvis Presley, and Frank Sinatra. The stadium had a seating capacity of roughly 13,000, and it was packed to the brim most nights. I remember when they beat UCLA, I was writing sports for the Sunday Courier and Press in those days. And after the game, I went in to talk to John Wooden after the game. And John Wooden just got beat by Evansville College. And he said, well, but let me tell you, he said, this stadium is why I came. And he said, I wanted to see your stadium. And he said, this is a first class basketball stadium. The 1964-65 team season was in doubt before it even started. One of the best players on the team, forward Jerry Sloan, was deciding on possibly leaving University of Evansville to play for the Baltimore Bullets of the NBA. Coach Arad McCutcheon wanted players to do what was in their best interest, however, he really wanted Sloan to stay. The Bullets made Sloan an offer that if he signed, he would leave college and go professional, a major life goal of his. Sloan made the Bullets a counteroffer, however, the team declined, so Sloan announced that he would return to UE for his senior year. In the wake of Sloan announcing that he would be returning to college, Coach McCutcheon said, Now we'll be expected to beat everybody, which no college team had ever done. Little did he know that the team would live up to expectations and break the undefeated barrier. Going into the 1964-65 season, the Purple Aces had very high expectations. UE had won the championship in the previous season, and their two best players, Larry Humes and Jerry Sloan, were returning and they were better than ever. The team had impressive depth, even though not everyone got minutes due to Coach McCutcheon keeping a small rotation where not many players would play. They opened the season ranked number one in the college division, now called Division II. The magical run that the Aces were about to go on had three main people, Coach Arad McCutcheon, forward Jerry Sloan, and forward Larry Humes, who were crucial to the success of the team. Coach McCutcheon ended his career at his alma mater with 515 career wins over 31 years. He is the greatest Division II coach ever and the only Division II coach to be inducted into the National Basketball Hall of Fame. Arad would end his 31-year coaching career with 15 Indiana Collegiate titles, 5 NCAA Division II titles, which was at the time only second to John Wooden. He was named the ICC Coach of the Year 12 times and National Coach of the Year twice. He was a brilliant, innovative coach, way ahead of his time, and he really, um, he, he just knew how to inspire people, particularly his players, and of course the fans. Uh, the attendance you know, it was great simply because they won a lot, of course. But uh, Arab just made games exciting and interesting. And his schedule, he scheduled teams like Northwestern, Purdue, Notre Dame, LSU, they all, UCLA, they all came to Evansville uh, College to watch the uh, play against the Aces. Jerry Sloan is another National Basketball Hall of Famer who is incredible in his own right. After a successful playing career at UE, he went on to play for the Chicago Bulls in the NBA and went on to later coach in the NBA, becoming one of the greatest coaches of all time. A real tough, hard-boned kid that played hard every game. You know, he might not be the leading scorer, but he would also be the t one of the top scorers, the top rebounder, the top assist leader, the best defensive player we had. He was just a great, great all-around player. Larry Humes is an incredible scorer who was the heart of UE for his entire career there. He averaged over 30 points per game on the year and was incredibly important to the success of the team. He ended his UE career with the all-time scoring record. 
The Aces began with a scrimmage on November 25, 1964, where it was treated like a dress rehearsal for the players, which Coach McCutcheon liked. After the scrimmage was done, Coach McCutcheon was asked if there was anything that he did not already know. Not really, he said. It was December 6, 1964, and it was opening night for the Purple Aces. 12,464 of the Aces faithful were in the crowd ready for the beginning of a new season of Purple Aces basketball. Every team was gunning for the Aces as they were defending national champions. Iowa kept it close most of the game by getting Jerry Sloan into foul trouble early, but the Aces ended up winning 90-83. Later in the season, the Aces were playing in a holiday tournament with LSU. With a crowd of 7,818 attendees, the Aces took a large lead with 6 minutes and 46 seconds remaining in the game. Larry Humes had contributed 45 points on the night when he was taken out of the game. The school record for single game scoring was 47 and the crowd was demanding that he got back into the game to break the record. The fans never got their wish and Humes did not get the record for now. January 3rd, 1965, Larry Humes was on fire like no UE player had ever been. After shooting 17 of 28, with 14 of 16 free throws, he ended up with 48 points on the night, which broke the record set by Ed Smallwood in 1960. Later in the year, DePaul was the Aces' 11th victim. With a crowd of 12,416 on hand, they saw the Aces dismantle the Tigers 117 to 88. This clinched a new milestone for Coach McCutcheon as he got a, the 300th win of his career, which is a large milestone for coaches. January 17, 1965, the Aces played St. Joseph's College. Larry Humes went for 30 points, giving him 600 on the year. He became the second player in Aces history to score more than 600 on the year. January 21st, 1965. The Aces played SIU for only the second time on the year. Down 79 to 80 with only seconds remaining, the Aces needed a miracle to pull out the win. Playing against future NBA Hall of Famer, Walt Frazier, the Aces were facing a situation like they haven't all year, losing with only seconds to play. However, the Aces managed to win on a last second layup from Larry Humes. It was the Aces' closest game of the year. March 11, 1965, Jerry Sloan and Larry Humes were unanimous choices for the Little All-American basketball team. Jerry Sloan and Larry Humes were also named First Team All-Indiana Collegiate Conference for the 1964-1965 season. March 13, 1965, the Aces did it. They broke the undefeated barrier which no college division basketball team had ever done before. This was achieved after they beat the Salukis 85-82 in overtime. Jerry Sloan and Larry Humes were phenomenal as usual with the dynamic duo giving UE 25 points and 25 rebounds and 32 points and 6 rebounds, respectively. This represented a major milestone for UE as coach Arad McCutcheon had just won his fourth college division national championship, which put him only behind coach John Wooden at the time for the most national championships for any college basketball coach. Jerry Sloan, since he was a senior, was now done with his UE career. However, he had gone out on the best possible way with a championship. Larry Humes had cemented his status as an all-time UE great and with one year left at UE, had a chance to go for a three-peat. The University of Evansville basketball team would go on to capture another college division title in 1971 before moving to Division I in 1977. While there have been many ups and downs throughout the decades, no single season will ever top the pure perfection the 64-65 Aces achieved.